If I could only figure out how to get my team motivated. We are never going to get this project done on time. Oh my God, my payroll numbers are insane. Why are we having all this overtime? Do you have these or similar employee problems? Do you feel like some of your employees are just there for a paycheck? Tired of recruiting, interviewing, onboarding, and training just to find out you must do it all over again? Then it's time for you to find out how to have outrageously awesome employees. Sit back, buckle up, and get ready because we're about to drop a knowledge bomb on you. Please welcome to the mic the host of the show, the man who puts the human in human resources, the 007 of team building, the emperor of employee engagement, Randy Starr. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of How to Have Outrageously Awesome Employees. Today we have a very special guest, Carla Roberts. Carla is the Director of Learning and Development with ARIA Las Vegas. Carla, how are you doing today? I'm good. Thanks for asking. How are you doing, Randy? I'm awesome. And you guys have some tremendous weather. She told me off air uh, those of you who are in the north probably won't want to hear this, but what was the temperature? 95 is the high today. Nice and hot. Yeah. So, <laughs> we're, okay here. we're okay here in Florida, but those of you in the northeast and the northwest, I talked to somebody a couple of days ago in Seattle, still pretty chilly up there. So. Oh, yeah, no, we like the dry heat out here. Yeah, I know. I've been to Vegas a couple times. I love it. It's a great town. Um, I don't think you ever run out of things to do, and I play golf, so it's even better. Yes, absolutely. Uh, There's always ready for you. Yeah, exactly. So just to get this started off, um, tell us about yourself. Tell us about your background, who you've worked for, what you've done, that type of stuff, so we can get to know you a little bit better. Sure, absolutely. Um, so every job I've ever held was in hospitality, but I didn't start out in human resources. Um, I'm a, a millennial. If you, if you read, and I know that's one of the buzzwords right now. Uh, so as far as millennials are concerned, there's something I agree with and some things I don't. Uh, but one of the stigmas about us millennials is that we job hop, and I can tell you that was 100% true when it came to me um, in hospitality. <laughs> My first job in life, I was a lifeguard at the age of 16 at one of the hotel and casino pools on the strip called New York, New York Hotel and Casino. It's got the big Statue of Liberty in front of it. Right, um, right. And at that point in time, my mother actually worked at the property in accounting. My father worked in engineering and my high school sweetheart worked as a bellman. So I was uh, always at New York, New York. It was a fun, kind of weird experience. Not probably not like other lifeguards where they actually guard people's lives. I just had to make sure that tourists didn't get too drunk and fall in the pool. Um, but fast forward, I uh, graduated high school and I was lucky enough to get a scholarship to go to UNLV. And oh, cool. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I, I, I didn't know, you know what I was super interested in. It was too hard for me to narrow my focus. And so I went undeclared in my major uh, for the first two years of college. Um, but when I turned uh, 19, I had decided I wanted to stop being lifeguard and I needed to do something else. The really hard part about this is when you're under the age of 21 in Las Vegas, it's really hard to find another job. Um, uh, so I got creative and started looking online and found a job in entertainment still at a hotel casino uh, where the age requirement was 18. But this particular position they had a preference that you would um, have at least two years of acting experience or at least two years of entertainment experience. And I had none. I had only ever sort of guarded lives at the pool. Um, but I applied for the position. Um, and I'll back up a little and tell you, when my dad left the company, he left the company to start his own business. And he told me, Carla, this company is going to be huge someday. You really need to learn how to network. And this was pre-Google. Right, so while the masterminds that were, were Google were creating everything that they created, I had to actually go to a dictionary and figure out what networking meant. Um, and, to, and to me, I decided this meant I had to help as many people as I could, put my face in front of as many people as I could in a positive light to help them see my value. And so in my little 16-year-old mind, this meant opening the door for people. 
something super simple. So uh, when I was guarding people's lives and picking up towels and trash at the pool, I would just open the door for executives and say, hi, how are you? Have a good night, get home safe. But that translated into every job I got thereafter. Um, so fast forward, I'm 19, I'm applying for this job in entertainment. And uh, the woman that was interviewing me remembered me from the pool. She said, oh my gosh, you're the girl from the pool. How's your mom? How's your dad? How's your boyfriend? And we sat there for 30 minutes talking about the job. And she said, you know, you don't have the preferred experience, but I'll take a shot on you. I can tell you've got the personality. And that was my first job being an usher in a Cirque du Soleil show. It was so fun. Um, I got paid to be part of the experience and to meet people from all over the world. I literally memorized all of the dance moves. Not very good, but it was fun. Um, and I learned that I love people. Um, but I did learn that job wasn't for me. So being on my feet, walking in heels up and down stairs all night was really hard. So I uh, was studying finance at that time. I was a declared business major. And I loved numbers. So I figured this is my opportunity. I'm finally 21. Um, I need to get my foot in the door and get my feet wet into an actual department in, in accounting and finance. So I went onto our career website at the time and found um, a position that was half food and beverage, half finance. Uh, it's the equivalent of when you go to Starbucks and you order a tall caramel frappuccino and the cashier is kind of pushing buttons on a screen. This particular right. position was responsible for analyzing how many buttons it took to produce that on a receipt, take it from five buttons to four buttons, and produce 20 more caramel frappuccinos in a day. So this particular <laughs> position required that you had at least one year of experience in food and beverage, and they preferred that you have at least two years of experience in finance. You want to take a stab at how many years experience I had? Yeah, I want to Zero. Get that. <laughs> um, but what I'm not kidding you, Randy. When I went to the interview, the woman that was interviewing me remembered me from the pool years before. She goes, "Oh my gosh, you're the girl from the pool. How's your mom? How's your dad? How's your boyfriend?" And we sat there and talked about why the job was open. And she was very candid with me and told me, "You know, I've been interviewing for eight months, and I haven't found anyone that has the experience we want. I just really need someone that wants to try hard and will learn the system." Um, they had a probationary period at that time that was 90 days, and she was very honest and said, if I offer you this opportunity, I'm going to cut it down to 30 days, so I need you to learn as quickly as you can. And that was my first opportunity to work in food and beverage and finance. I learned so much in the four years that I spent under her mentorship. Um, and the only human interaction I got was when we were firing people, because we caught a lot of thieves, to be honest, <laughs> that you get really good at reading reports. and and all of that. So I had an honest conversation with her after about four years where I said, I've, I've loved what I've learned. I've loved what we've done, but I really miss talking to people in, in having that human interaction. So right. she was a great mentor in my life and she set me up in an eight month leadership program uh, where I was exposed to executive level leadership, executive level mentoring. And uh, she said, I don't know what you're gonna be one day, but you're gonna be great at it. So learn all you can from these people and see what you can't figure out. So the mentor that I was partnered up with uh, was the vice president of hotel operations at a casino here in Las Vegas, Hotel Casino. And he said, Carla, I've got the perfect job for you. Uh, I'm going to get you an interview tomorrow. Make sure you're dressed up nice, get your resume ready, uh, and meet me at Circus Circus at 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. He said, okay, Tim, before we do this, what job am I applying for? And he said, you are going to be the learning and development manager at Circus Circus Hotel and Casino. I said, what? What does this person do? What is this? Um, so he sent over the job description. I started reading it, and they preferred that you had at least two years of experience in human resources, two years of experience, L&D, curriculum building, and I had zero. Um, but this is where things get really funny. I went to the interview. Tim introduced me to the VP of HR, and she had worked at New York, New York, and remembered me opening the door when I was just a teenager. She goes, you're the girl from the pool. How's your mom? How's your dad? <laughs> I finally got to say I'm not with that boyfriend anymore. Um, that was, she gave me my first opportunity in, in human resources, and I, I just realized I really love helping people get acclimated to the culture and helping people understand things no matter what their educational background is, no matter what their, uh, their language, um, their English language experience is. And she gave me my first opportunity. Um, it was really hard though. As soon as I got my first job in human resources, the person that hired me left. 
So it was a really interesting transition um, and a very expedited kind of you know, rapid growth and learning into human resources. Uh, but I stayed there for about four years uh, before I, f I finally got a phone call from that VP of Hotel Operations, Tim. He called me back and said, now I want you to come work for me. And I said, oh, right. great. I, I would love to come work for you. What am I going to be doing? He said, loyalty marketing. And, you know, <laughs> I left human resources <laughs> to go to a job I had zero experience in. Um, and that was the first time I didn't pass my probation. And the reason that happened was because I got a phone call from the Golden Nugget, and they said, we've heard great things about you. Come be our culture change champion. And uh, I stayed there for about three years under the amazing mentorship of the Senior Vice President of Human Resources, was promoted three times um, in the three years I was there before I was headhunted to ARIA Las Vegas. Um, and so as far as my background is concerned, true millennial in the sense of kind of jumping all over the place, but really I've just followed my passion every time it's changed. So thought I wanted to, to do entertainment, thought I wanted to do numbers, and then realized once I grew up a little bit that people are really where my heart is. Wow. What a great story. Yeah. <laughs> and and I've, got, I've already got the title for your book. Let's hear it. Um, how opening doors open doors for me. Perfect. <laughs> I'm going to change my tagline on LinkedIn right now. Yeah, that's, <laughs> um, that's great. See, it's, it's funny, though. Um, you, I hear your, when you talk and you tell us about what you've done and how it started with what you thought networking was, you just had the spirit of service. Yes, absolutely. You, yeah, I mean, opening doors for people. Some people don't even like to do that. You know, some people think that that's beneath them or whatever. But anybody that's worked in hospitality and has been successful has that spirit. And you obviously have it very well. Thank so you. you are. Tell, tell me what you do. What is um, this is going off script just a bit. Sure. But what do you do? Um, as the director of learning and development, what is your main focus? So my main focus changes constantly. Uh, you know, one thing that I think I've started realizing is adaptability is a skill you either ha have or you have to learn quick. Um, if you're going right. to work in the hospitality and human resources industry, when I was just a lifeguard, our human resources department was the department that you went to when you were in trouble. <laughs> and that's what they were. And I've kind of seen this evolution of human resources being this business partner, right? They're here right. for you uh, at every step of the employee life cycle. And when questions arise and you don't know where to go, human resources is the first department that you typically think of, at least here right. in Las Vegas in the hospitality industry. And so yeah. being the director of learning and development sounds like a really fancy title for someone that creates curriculum and someone that trains and teaches others, but there's so much more to it than that. Uh, we really our business partners and we get in with the operators, find out what it is that they think they need, look at the data from the surveys that we have, we look at the data from what our business is producing as far as um, economic outcomes, and we ask how can we create programs that help engage our employees um, and promote uh, you know, guest service and hospitality and everything that we stand for as a company. How do we tie in our core values? How do we make sure our managers are so engulfed in what our core values are that not only do they embody it, but they make sure that they're hiring people that fit that culture? And then how do we sustain? And then once we've sustained, as soon as, we, as, soon as we've got that figured out, something changes and we have to start all, all over again and make sure we're still sustaining. Um, so I kind of, I never stop and say that this is it. Um, it's just, we're quickly adapting as things change here. So would you say that the, one of the most interesting pieces of the human resource experience is change. I think change is absolutely one of the most um, interesting components of human resources. I mean, the laws change so frequently depending on who comes yeah. into office, right? The regulations right. change um, as the laws change. Even tax laws change. Uh, most recently, we, we read an article that um, our employees could be taxed on some of the uh, gift cards that we're giving out and, and movie tickets and things like that. So even those little tiny details that we use to kind of supplement our employee engagement here change. And I think 
Um, if you're an individual who enjoys continuous growth and learning, human resources is one of the best places you can go because consistency, uh, we must carry out as far as the policies and procedures are concerned, but we also have to adapt with, uh, you know, the regulations that are occurring outside of our business that affect us. Right. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, oh, that's the um, unfortunate piece. Yes. The legal stuff. That's the, the non, legal non, stuff. non-fun stuff. Yes. And I agree with you in the uh, transformation of HR. It used to be the principal's office, and now it's actually a, a business partner, and a lot of people are taking that title on, you know, director yeah. of human resources and strategic business partner. So it's awesome. I think the the if you watched it from the beginning like when i was um when i was in high school my mother worked for a very large uh chemical company and she was in employee relations so you know it was like personnel they yes. kept all the employee records and when you know uh when you were hired and if you had any disciplinary actions that kind of stuff that's and now go. that's kind of like um not even thought of i mean you have to do that kind of stuff but everybody in hr is so forward thinking now and they're thinking about the culture more i mean back when my mom was in this um there was no culture culture was was, yeah it wasn't about this is your job this is your job i'm telling you to do it this is the way you do it now go do it or i'll fire you yeah they they didn't yeah so it's interesting tell us um tell us what and we heard quite a few already, but tell us what you would consider to be your greatest accomplishment so far in HR. So one of my favorite projects is actually mentoring um, mentoring our interns. We have here in Las Vegas, there are a couple of programs uh, that promote hospitality in the tourism industry. Uh, one of them is with Valley High School here. They've got a hospitality program for juniors and seniors that are in high school trying to figure out what they want to do um, and they come for 10 weeks over the summer and you know I I listened to a TED talk recently and they said you know uh, where your heart lies when you are a young child and when you aged um, and you're nearing the end of your life and I remember back to a story my mom told me she said when I was a little girl she would pick me up from daycare and she would always chuckle because the uh, daycare teachers would always be sitting in the back while I was reading books to the students so I always had (laughs) right I always knew deep in my heart that I wanted to be at the front of the class and I wanted to help people learn and I wanted to be uh, the one that they felt most comfortable with and so with these kids It's always really exciting Um, on week one when we sit down with them and we say, what are your interests? What are you, what are you looking to experience out of these 10 weeks? Um, And, you know, I actually overhauled that program to make it customizable based on that first week answer. But then we do these pulse checks and it's really funny to see uh, once we expose them to what the real world looks like, rather than what they've learned in a classroom, um, how much what they think they want changes. And so uh, one of the really cool, my my favorite accomplishments was taking these four high school seniors, putting them in a room um, and saying, this is your think tank. I'm going to give you a a real business problem that we're experiencing right now. And I want you to come up with a solution. And so really just facilitating this conversation about right now in the hospitality world, one of the survey responses that we're seeing a trend in is the wait time at check-in. So if you've ever come to Las Vegas and stayed at one of our hotels, and you get there to the check-in area and you see a long line, it's kind of like going to Disneyland. You're like, oh, I got to wait in this long line. Same thing for exactly. this check-in here. And so we right. gave that, um, that idea to them and said, how do we solve it from your perspective? And just facilitating their conversations, they came up with the most brilliant ideas. And, and week one, if you were to tell me that they would be these confident speakers and be able to present in front of our executives, I would have said, I don't know. But by week 10, they presented three ideas to our executive team and they actually wound up implementing them. And so now wow. when, I walk, when I walk around our property, I say, it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, what education level you have. We had 17 year old children come here and solve a business problem. Um, it was just nice to be part of that. And I still keep in touch with them. So it's nice to follow their, their progress. 
That is amazing. What? Yeah. That, that's great. That's yes. just awesome. I mean, yes. <laughs> and th- and the fact that you keep in touch with them is even better because who's to tell what will happen in their lives? Exactly. You know? I told them they're going to be my bosses one day. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. you never know. Yeah. So with your group of folks that you have now, how many employees sure. – will you have Monday morning? So 3,000 employees uh, for the food and beverage department, which is primarily where I'm focusing my human resources efforts. Uh, but the property that I'll be at has about 7,000. So 3,000 in food and beverage and 7,000 total. Yes. That's, 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 a lot of, that's a lot of people. A lot of people. It's a lot of people. Um, what would you... What would you say that you do to help your folks that you're focused on, the 3,000 that will be in food and beverage? What would you do to help them grow? Not, so maybe, I, not, maybe not just in their jobs, but Sure, sure. Personally, professionally, I think yeah. everyone's growth goal is different. And so for me, getting to know the leaders in the areas that I'll be overseeing is super critical because they spend every day with those 3,000 folks. And so um, creating an environment where there's open dialogue and someone feels comfortable coming in and saying, hey, uh, you know, I, I feel like I haven't learned this as much as I could. What can I do to hone in on that skill? And being able to respond quickly enough and know what resources exist within our company is crucial for my position. Um, I have to keep a pulse on all of the new programs that are rolling out. I have to keep a pulse on what community resources are offered. And then I also need to be out in the trenches having conversations with people where they feel comfortable enough to have that kind of conversation. Um, I've been exposed to employees that work external to the company that I work at that have let me know uh, my manager doesn't care, right? Or my supervisor doesn't listen to me. Um, right. and, and it's not necessarily that I think they don't care. I think sometimes operators just get so focused on the whirlwind of keeping things going that when something um, comes before them that isn't in that whirlwind, it's sometimes hard to shift their focus and stop and listen. And so for me, impacting the individuals that impact my 3,000 folks um, and making sure they understand the importance of listening is crucial. Yes. Um, so you wander around quite a bit. I do. And it looks like wandering, but you'll also see me picking up trash, helping guests, showing them our restaurant <laughs> options. And so for me, I make very doors. good use of my time. Open doors, abs- open every open door. Doors. Absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> so, okay. Tell us, tell us a specific time when you helped an employee overcome a challenge. Ooh, that's a really good one. Um, I have a lot of stories I can think of, but some of the ones that touch my heart the most are when our employees are in crisis. So uh, back to, you know, your last question, I talked about wandering around and having conversations with employees. We absolutely always talk business, but I start up by asking how they're doing. And, you know, when right. people say good, that's not a good enough response for me. I right. really want to know how you're doing. Um, and so from those conversations, sometimes you get some really sad stories. Um, and, and the company that I work for is gracious enough to offer an employee emergency relief program. And so when I'm out there talking to employees and engaging with them in conversation, when they let me know that they've experienced a financial crisis because of an emergency that's happened in their life, um, those are some of the stories and examples that I have. This particular individual, um, I found out, was living out of their car. So they were working um, for our property, living out of their car, but they just did, they were so scared to lose their job that they didn't speak up and say something. And so I think as humans, we have emotional intelligence. We have it. It's just sometimes untapped. And so, uh, you know, when I asked this person how they were doing, they looked at me and said, oh, I'm good. And I said, no, really, how are you doing? And they just broke down, you know, and when they started telling me this story, I said, we can help you. I go, let's go talk to your manager for a minute, see if we can't get you up to my office. And it was as simple as just getting a couple of supporting documents, following the process that we have in place consistently. And we were able to financially uh, support them and get them to a place where they were back on their feet and, and, um, you know, able to sustain. And I have a ton of more stories like that, but you 
don't get the opportunity to help people at that level unless you're asking them sincerely, how are you doing? And you have to get out of your office. Yes, that's the trick. That's the trick. I, I have, um, when, I was, when I worked in hotels, I hated the office. Uh, I spent more time going from floor to floor to floor, talking to housekeepers and, yes. and that type of thing. Um, I hated doing the, you know, the business stuff. I would, yeah. I, I would prefer to spend more time with employees and guests than I would with the other stuff. And if you don't do that, I mean, there's gotta be a good blend. Absolutely. You have, you have business responsibilities, obviously. Um, but if you don't get out and talk to your employees and talk to your customers and talk to your guests, you're missing the boat, yep. especially when it comes to employees. So many people, yes. have, I don't know if you saw my post this morning, but it was about, it's Thursday, so it's Thank Me Thursday. And it's like, there's so many people that, and I've been pushing gratitude for the last six or eight months on every every yes. Thursday. It's like, go tell your people thank you. Yes. Tell your barista in the morning when you get a coffee from them, tell them thank you. Don't just say thanks and walk away. Look them in the eye and say thank you and mean Absolutely. it. Absolutely. But I have been finding, I get comments back and people send me emails and stuff and they say, I am thankful, but I just don't say it. I'm like, well, then you're not. Then you're That's not what it was saying today. it. It's like, have you ever, have you ever done something say it never happened unless there's pics? <laughs> <laughs> it's, the same, it's the same thing with thank you. If you don't say it, it you don't mean it. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. So that's awesome. I love it when people tell me that they go out of their office and they spend time walking around the, you know, to talk to the employees. I mean, it's it's amazing because there's so many the folks that sometimes that I deal with. They have challenges. I mean, that's what I do is I help people overcome their employee sure. challenges. And it doesn't take a, a, a rocket scientist and it doesn't take a long time in speaking with people on what the issue is. And nine times out of 10, it's like, just go talk come to out. people. And you I think what's funny them. is you spend all of this time in, in meetings and in offices trying to figure out how to solve these problems. But if all you did was get out there and ask the employees that are doing the job how to solve the problems, you would get 10 good ideas to choose from. Well, we do employee engagement surveys. Sure. And I, I got to where I am in this field because I have read to date every comment that has ever been entered into That's our system great. in the last almost 20 years now. They used to be handwritten on paper and then we had yeah. data entry people transcribe them into our system. And yeah. that's how it got started because I was in an office that had, um, my office was in the middle and then there was three other offices around it. And those three offices were full of data entry people. And what a boring job. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> so they're in there, they're in there, you know, flipping very paper and thorough, typing yes. stuff. Oh yeah. And <laughs> they get to the handwritten comments and then, you know, you'd hear one of them chuckle and laugh and then somebody else would, Hey, listen to this one. And they made a game out of it and they put a whiteboard in the entry hall and they would go and write down on the whiteboard what they thought the funniest comment of the day oh, was. Oh, wow. So I started reading comments for humor to wow. find funny ones, but you find a you lot more. You get a more. lot of value. A lot of the oh, answers found, to your problems are in there. I found the trends. I know I can tell yep. you pretty much what's happening before it even happens. Yeah. But... The cool thing is, is we do these surveys and we turn these results over with these comments to our clients who pay good money to, to get this service. And then 90 days later, they haven't done anything with it. It's yeah. like, you ownership, just ask your... I think, and ownership is, I think, a, a big problem in management in general. Um, people, people get promoted sometimes to positions because they were good at whatever that entry level position was. And someone says, Hey, you did right. that well. 
let's give you some more responsibility, a little bonus and, and some more money. And if, right. the, if the training doesn't come along with that and letting them know, right. hey, now that you've got this title, it also comes along with some extra ownership and responsibility. Um, someone right. has to pick up the ball and run with it. And if more people are there running alongside that person, that's when the magic really happens. Right. Well, you mentioned earlier um, when you're out talking to folks and you said that um, you needed to get to know the leaders because they deal with the 3,000 on a daily basis. Yes. And sometimes they're, you know, operators, the whirlwind. And mm -hmm. how do you get those people? Those are the ones that you need on board. Yes. Those are the ones that need to have your thought process and they need to be the ones who are concerned about the employees because they're the ones who see them every day and every morning. How do sure. you get them to do that? So part of the culture is getting uh, everyone acclimated at every level of the organization. So I'm lucky enough that I have the support of a great executive leadership team um, that they walk the walk. But they also come to me as that um, subject matter expert for my area. So when I tell right. them, I need you out walking on the floor saying hi to our supervisors, I need you out there asking them how they're doing so that when I right. come around and ask them to do it, it's already part of our culture. And so really right. mapping out what those behaviors and actions look like at every level of the organization and having the executive buy-in is so crucial. Um, I hear horror stories about people that work for executives that say, oh yeah, that employee engagement stuff and they have to hire an employee engagement person because it's the next big thing, but then they don't right. follow through on the actions that are necessary to create that environment of open, candid feedback. And so I think making sure that I have the support first before I go out in the trenches is important, and I'm lucky enough to have a leader that will take the extra time out of, out of their day to go walk around and not only talk to the supervisors, but talk to some of the line-level employees and have the same conversations. So I think if you have enough people um, above you that are doing it, you almost feel silly if you're not doing it too, right? Yeah, um, and so exactly. if they're setting the example um, at that high level, it'll cascade down to those other leaders throughout the organization and become part of the culture. That's awesome. So it yeah. all revolves around the culture. Mm -hmm. And our best clients um, all have – uh, just a tremendous culture that yes. starts at the top and the bottom and it goes like that. Yes, exactly. It, and, and they even, we have one client who just blows me away with their culture uh, on a daily basis. I mean, they're, everything they do is about their handbook. They have a handbook that is like their Bible. You know, this is how we, this is how we communicate. This is what we do every day. This, these are things in their handbook. I mean, just spelled out drama. We don't do this. You know? yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like, and it's in a language that everyone understands. It's not in a language that was written in the ivory tower by somebody who doesn't sure. hang out in the break room, you know, yeah. and it's just phenomenal. They get great buy-in. Yeah. The, the hourly employees, are allowed to say uh, to the boss, um, mm -mm, we don't do that here. You know? <laughs> yeah. So it's pretty cool. That pretty is cool. really cool. And I think it provides clarity too. So uh, as long as you're speaking clearly and as long as everything is clearly defined, but also, uh, you know, open for change as long as it's warranted. Um, when you set those expectations clearly, it's easier to navigate. But what I think some businesses fail at, at least when I go shopping and I'm observant, right, um, is they have right. these clearly defined expectations, but then there's exceptions. So because this person was hired 20 years ago, they're an exception to the rule. Because this person mm -hmm. is this level, they're an exception to the rule. And we don't allow that to exist where I work. And because we have the executive buy-in and, and we have everyone kind of moving in the same direction, when ex expectations are clearly defined and followed, um, that's right. when the magic happens. Yeah, I agree. I think we, the seniority piece is, um, kind of old. Yeah.
You know, I mean, it's great. I think it's great yeah. to have, uh, it's great to have people that have been with you for a long time, but when you give them preferential treatment and you excuse things because they've been here for 10 years, well, he's been here for 10 years. It's okay yeah. if he does it. No, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. not, not at all. Yep. Okay. Uh, I've got a couple more questions I want to ask you. Um, since you are in uh, learning and development, yes. what type of training do you feel is the most important training for your employees? Because we work in the service industry, I think service skills are absolutely important to build upon. Um, yeah. But, you know, I could even go a step further and say we have to hire people that want to serve others. I'm in an industry where people save a lot of money and spend a lot of money to come here for experiences. And if we don't recognize at every level in our positions here that we have a part to play in that show, that uh, we're missing the opportunity to get loyalty from that customer. So service is absolutely the industry that we're in, and it's one of the most important skills that we hire on and uh, the one that we continuously refresh on and keep retraining. It's what we evaluate ourselves on. Uh, we look at the feedback, and that's at every level of our organization. So even in human resources, our our customers are the employees. They're not the guests that are out in the front of the house. And so we ask ourselves, um, ourselves, how are we serving those employees and are they getting the service level that they expect from us? Are they getting the responses in a timely manner? Are they um, you know, getting the help from all the way from step one to step 20 to get them to the point they need to be at? And sometimes I think when, um, individuals work in a service industry and they're in human resources, they lose sight of how important it is to serve their clients as well. Yeah, I, I agree. Service is so important. And I think it's something that's somewhat, well, for me, it seems like it's easy to train people because it's not, it's not, not difficult. It's just open doors. It's just smile. opening doors, smiling. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We're good. We're going to have your book written by the time this is There over. we go. I'm excited. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I know the answer to this question already, but tell us about your typical day. What do oh. you do? <laughs> so it's absolutely not typical. You know, I could start off with about uh, a list of 10 items that I want to get done in the day, and, and I'm lucky if I cross off one. Um, not because I don't right. manage my time well, but because there's so many other things that happen throughout the course of the day that take precedence and priority. If service is the attitude that we're going to exhibit here and it's one of our core values, then I need to make sure when someone needs my help that I serve them properly and in a timely manner. And so right. um, helping anywhere that I can see fit when I'm out on the floor, helping to pick up that trash, helping guests get from point A to point B and educating them and all of the lovely menu items that we have on our restaurants, helping our employees recognize that there are um, programs that can help them through whatever it is that they're going through. Um, you know, it's not a typical day here, but I think for me, mapping out what I want to accomplish is important. And, um, you know, I, I try and make sure that I get everything done that needs to get done in a timely manner, but I also make sure that what is important gets um, managed timely. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, and I like the fact that you said that um, you might not get everything ticked off of your list, but because you're in service, hey, you've got to walk the walk. Absolutely. Somebody comes to you and, oh, I'm too busy right now. I've got too many things to do. I'll get with you later. That's yeah. kind of not setting the right example. Last question. Last question. This one, this one, I promise. This is really not for me, but this is for someone who may be listening that is considering human resources or maybe someone who's already in human resources, but they're new what words of wisdom or advice would you give them to help them be successful? Well, first, open doors for people, of course. <laughs> um, but yeah. secondly, get to know who the clients are for human resources. 
go talk to the people um, and the, the departments that Human Resources serves and ask them what they think about the Human Resources team. Um, ask them what they want from Human Resources. How could Human Resources help them better? Once you kind of know who your clients are and who you're serving, it almost helps you understand what you need to research in order to be that good go-to Human Resources person. You know who your customers are, you know who you're serving and what it is that they want from you. It's really easy to find a starting point. I would love to say find a good human resources mentor um, and you'll find plenty of those because there's a lot of really great knowledgeable people out there. But the other right. part of the business is if you can't serve the people, your clients, there's not going to be, you're not going to be a necessity. So once you find out who your clients are, go out there and talk to them, ask them what their needs and wants are and how human resources can be better and then be that person. There you go. Some awesome stuff. <laughs> Carla Roberts, Director of Learning and Development, ARIA, Las Vegas. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Randy. I appreciate it. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, those of you who are listening for the first time, make sure you, um, Subscribe, and we'll let you know when we've got something else published. Bye for now. Thanks for hanging out with us. Please feel free to contact Randy with any questions about team building or employee engagement issues. Subscribe to this channel so you'll be notified when new episodes are published.